Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Good afternoon, and I'd like to thank Shirley for introducing me, and thank you for inviting me to present some of the FDA thinking on reducing sodium consumption today. My name is Casey Heinz, and I've been working on sodium reduction issues in the Office of Food Additive Safety for over four years. Today I am going to talk about the importance of sodium reduction. I will highlight recommendations from major authoritative bodies and I will discuss where we get sodium as well as the various roles that it plays. I will provide an example of successful salt reduction and I'll emphasize that FDA has made a commitment to sodium reduction as a priority. The importance of sodium reduction is clear. It's an important public health issue because excess sodium intake is associated with increased blood pressure, which about one th third of adults do have. Excess sodium consumption is also a contributory factor in the development of hypertension, which is a leading cause of heart disease and stroke. Americans currently consume almost double what is required of sodium each day. And recent estimates show that reducing excess sodium over time can prevent a significant number of deaths. So I'd like to start with this question, which asks, how much sodium do Americans eat? And I see the results tallying, so I'll give it just a minute. And it's looking like most of the group, most of you on the line are indicating that we're taking in 3,800 milligrams per day. In fact, the average intake is estimated at 3,400 milligrams each of sodium each day. So let's actually jump to another question. How much sodium should we be consuming? And it's looking like most on the line are indicating the, that the answer is C. About 55% are indicating that, 25% are indicating B. So you guys are right in tune with where this lines up. As you're probably aware, the 2010 Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommend that Americans reduce their intake of sodium to less than 2,300 milligrams per day, and for those who are at higher risk, a further reduction to 1,500 milligrams per day is recommended. In addition to the U.S. Dietary Guidelines, other groups have made similar recommendations or have set goals in agreement with the recommendations, and most recently, in 2013, the Institute of Medicine report also reaffirmed that the associations between, between sodium intake and direct health outcomes are consistent with population-based efforts to reduce excess sodium. Some of you may also be familiar with data that shows over three-quarters of the sodium in our U.S. diet comes from packaged and restaurant foods. This fact presents a challenge to consumers who are interested in eating less sodium and who, would try, and who would try to achieve the dietary guidelines for Americans. On this slide, I am displaying two different meal selections for one day. So perhaps I eat a bacon and egg croissant for breakfast, pizza and cookies for lunch, chips as a snack, and fried chicken for dinner. But I decide to make a change to be healthier. So I eat some bran flakes for breakfast with skim milk and fruit, a turkey sandwich on whole grain bread with tomato soup for lunch. I'll eat a light yogurt with pretzels for a snack, and then grilled chicken with a salad for dinner. The second diet seems like some better choices are included and the calories do reduce. 
But if you look at the sodium per day, which is shown at the bottom of the slide, it's still way, way above what is recommended. We saw that part of the challenge is that sodium is found in most packaged and restaurant foods. Reducing sodium in foods could therefore apply to multiple food categories. The thing about sodium is that it's an inexpensive ingredient that not only does not add calories, but it adds flavor and it can have technological functions in foods such as inhibiting microbial growth or enabling texture formation in certain foods. The listing on the right on this slide displays the top food sources of sodium. Breads and rolls contribute the most sodium to the US diet because Americans do consume a lot of bread. Because of the recognized challenges of meeting recommendations for sodium intake, a number of authoritative bodies have called out that there should be a deliberative reduction of sodium in foods. Taking this step will provide consumers with options to be able to reduce intake based on dietary choices, since those options are currently very limited. In 2010, an Institute of Medicine committee published a report on strategies to reduce sodium intake in the US. The report noted that FDA's efforts to reduce sodium intake have spanned over 40 years. In past years, the activities focused primarily on labeling and education. However, the report did note that these efforts did not have the desired effect and that alternate approaches should be taken. The primary recommendation in the report, therefore, was that FDA should initiate a process to set mandatory national standards for the sodium content of processed and restaurant foods. As an interim strategy, the Institute of Medicine recommended that the food industry should voluntarily act to reduce the sodium content of foods. Many companies have made progress or have committed to significant reductions, and I will briefly talk more about this later in the webinar. Supporting strategies recommended by the IOM committee included nutrition labeling and consumer education. In addition to this, various monitoring and surveillance recommendations were provided. And these related to measuring sodium intake, salt taste preference, and sodium content of foods. I mentioned salt, ta salt taste preference, so let me pause here just a minute to mention that we know that if food does not taste good, people will make other selections, or they will, all, they will add salt back to their foods. There is evidence, however, that shows salt preference can change over time. So one important question is how can we all work together in the United States to encourage this type of gradual change? Efforts to reduce sodium are not just occurring in the US. There are over 35 countries working on sodium reduction internationally. And certain of these countries have larger initiatives. The next question that I have for you, therefore, is which initiative recently published data linking salt reduction to health outcomes? And I'll give just a minute for the responses to tally. So it's looking like approximately 55 to 60% are saying that C, Canada, is the answer. And about 30% are indicating England, which is B. The answer is England. Recently, in 2014, a paper was published in the British, British Medical Journal which attributed credit for reduction in population blood pressure between 2003 and 2000, 2011 to reduce salt intake. The paper also noted that these reductions in blood pressure could be expected to reduce the occurrence of stroke by 11% and ischemic heart disease by about 6%. So what kind of salt reduction was seen in England? Well, the UK set the goal of reaching 6 grams per day, or 2,400 milligrams per day, by 2012. 
In 2006, they established sodium reduction targets for the food industry for 85 food categories with the goal of meeting those by 2010. In 2008, it became clear that the 2010 targets would not go far enough to reduce salt intake to 6 grams per day or 2,400 milligrams per day, so they updated the targets with a new timeline to be met in 2012. They also established and published manufacturing and catering commitments in 2010 and again gathered pledges from the catering sector in 2012 to continue to move that arena forward. And when I say catering, what I'm referring to is restaurants. Thus, for, salt, for reduced salt intake by about 15%. Sorry, everyone, and thank you for hanging in there. Um, to clarify the last point that I was just making, I was just indicating that thus far, England has reduced salt intake by about 15%, and they are continuing to strive toward their goals. One thing this and other evidence is showing us is that some large companies have been able to reduce sodium in other countries in products similar to those that are sold in the U.S. And switching gears back to the U.S., announcements by industry tell us that there are some voluntary efforts underway. A number of companies have also made commitments to sodium reduction through the New York City National Salt Reduction Initiative and different other venues. General information has also been shared with us about the fact that some companies are testing different sodium alternatives. So we know there have been some efforts made to reduce sodium in U.S. foods, and we hope that this continues. We have heard that small reductions are quite achievable and that more research and study may be necessary for further reductions. FDA remains committed to sodium reduction and we are actively responding to the IOM's recommendations. Sodium reduction in processed food is prioritized as part of FDA's strategy through 2015. We also highlight sodium reduction in two of the seven goals of the FDA Food and Veterinary Medicine Program Strategic Plan for 2012 to 2016. Program Goal 4, which is not shown on this slide, addresses labeling and education, specifically highlighting the nutrition facts label, menu labeling regulations, and consumer access to and use of nutrition information. Program Goal 5, shown here, in includes an objective to reduce the sodium content in the food supply. This goal is important considering that past education and labeling efforts alone did not fully achieve the desired outcome. And I have provided the link to both the FDA and Office of Foods and Veterinary Medicine strategy documents, which are available on our website. To move toward achieving these goals, our current sodium reduction activities at FDA therefore include new education and labeling efforts, as well as conducting technical review and soliciting input. Nutrition education remains essential to our sodium reduction efforts. We have developed numerous nutrition education initiatives which incorporate sodium reduction messages. Our materials are available on our website and include understanding sodium information on the nutrition facts label. I have provided some of these website links at the end of the pre presentation. We have also collaborated with others, such as the Million Hearts Campaign, which aims to prevent a million, heart, million deaths from strokes and heart attack over five years. Labeling also remains a critical component of our sodium reduction efforts. In the proposed rule for menu labeling, we propose that sodium be required as part of the written materials that restaurants must provide to consumers upon request. We have also been working on a proposed rule to update the Nutrition Facts Panel and are considering whether the daily value for sodium should change. In addition to this, we have had discussions with the Grocery Manufacturer Association and many companies to identify a front-of-pack nutrition labeling system. The current industry-supported system and many other front-of-pack systems do include sodium. 
In addition to the efforts that I just mentioned, we are also conducting technical reviews to understand the issues that are critical for achievable and safe sodium reduction in the food supply. This includes a review of the literature on the technical and microbiological functions of sodium in food. It also involves looking at the levels of sodium in the current food supply. Using this approach, we have learned that there are a lot of unknowns. In 2011, we began a process to solicit information on some of those unknowns. We initiated discussions both within the federal government as well as with external stakeholders. Since FDA and USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service together have authority over the entire U.S. food supply, an important component of our efforts was our joint announcement in the Federal Register in 2011 to solicit comments on a number of issues related to sodium reduction. This included gaining a better understanding of the potential technological challenges of sodium reduction and how these could be different for various types of foods. We followed up by convening a public meeting to further discuss the issues raised and we partnered with other agencies to do this. Through this process, we received about 1,500 comments, and about 300 of those were substantive. We have learned a lot from our review of other initiatives and from available data and comments. We hope to receive more technical input about sodium reduction for specific foods and categories. We are considering various options at this time, and we are working toward the development of draft voluntary sodium reduction targets. Our goals are for sodium reduction to be safe, achievable, sustainable for the whole food supply. We feel that a committed effort to surveillance will help in accomplishing these goals while meeting the needs of consumers. And earlier on, I had asked the question in the presentation, how can we all work together to encourage gradual change? We feel that broad, sustainable reductions in sodium will take a concerted effort by all stakeholders in order to be successful. Experience has shown us that in approaching sodium reduction, no single tool will be enough to promote reductions in intake sufficient to meet the recommendations of the dietary guidelines. Food reformulation, labeling and communication, and changes in dietary patterns will all be necessary if we are to achieve the reductions envisioned for the dietary guidelines. In conclusion, I'd like to emphasize that we continue to be very interested in the public health benefits available from reduced sodium intake and the role of the agency in facilitating progress in that direction. We are also strongly committed to basing our actions on the best available current scientific data and information. We've learned from other sodium reduction initiatives, such as those in the UK, Health Canada, and the New York City National Salt Reduction Initiative. We have also learned from published literature and from comments provided to us. However, there is a lot that remains to be learned. We are committed to a sodium reduction effort that applies to the entire food supply and that is effective. We hope that our approach can meet the needs of all and that it can be a win for everyone involved, including consumers, industry, and public health agencies. So thank you for listening to um, the presentation today about sodium reduction. And I have provided a sampling of links to other resources on sodium reduction. The CDC website also includes many fact sheets, infographics, and toolkits for your use. So my email address is also provided if you would like to reach out with any questions. Thank you very much, Casey, for that most informative presentation about sodium. We did have some questions that came in early in your presentation, but I think you've answered the one about what our IOM has suggested. So we won't, won't uh, repeat that one. But the, there's another question that, at, that says that sodium is a vehicle for iodine in the diet. So is there, do you think that there is a need for the public to look for other ways to obtain iodine as we start to decrease our intake of salt? 
It is my current understanding that in the U.S. at least there is not an iodine issue. Um, there are groups who are exploring looking at different subpopulations in regard to that. Um, at this time I, I wouldn't venture to um, suggest that US, the U.S. needs to be changing their diet in any way to receive adequate iodine, um, but we will um, keep people posted if uh, analysis shows otherwise. Thank you. There's another question that says, would you please comment on the proposed daily values for sodium and how it relates to the FDA's effort to uh, reduce sodium intake? Um, I am actually in a different office than the group that works primarily on that. So rather than answering for them, what I would like to do is if you, would, if you wanted to email me that question, I'll let them respond to you because I'm not aware of the current status of all that they're reviewing. Thank you. And we have time for perhaps one more question. Um, the questioner wants to know, when will the draft guidelines be published? Uh, we have no timeline for publishing the draft guidelines currently. Um, we are, um, we have made public that we're considering voluntary draft targets, but we have no timeline. So uh, just keep an eye out for information on our website. And um, that's the best that I can give you at this time. We want to thank you so much for your presentation. And I want to thank the audience for sending in their questions. So we will move on to our next presentation um, momentarily. <laughs>